Hello and thank you for joining us for another segment of Supreme Feminine Essence, The Gifts You Were Born With. I'm really excited to introduce you to Maureen St. Germain. Welcome, Maureen. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm grateful to have you. You were on a radio show with me where I interviewed you, and I loved your process manifestation. And that's part of what we're going to talk about in bringing it back to the Supreme Feminine Essence. Because that, that is one of our gifts, isn't it? To be yes, able it to is. Manifest. Wonderful. So share with us your journey on how you got to where you are. We all love the background story. And, uh -huh. and then we'll get into the question and answers. Okay. So I have always been a very optimistic person. But uh, in my own life, I was married for 25 years. And when my marriage fell apart at that point, I was devastated because I couldn't comprehend in my own mind how we could get that far and not continue. And we were at a place where I had done some things I shouldn't have. And my husband, you know, five years or ten years later, had done some things he shouldn't have. And I wanted us to continue. And I thought he did too, but he was acting out otherwise. And I really struggled with that. I, I, I think uh, I attended a seminar where the, the leader said, tell your partner, you know, you're just randomly assigned to a partner, tell the partner you're assigned to the thing you're most ashamed of. And I remember telling this lovely gay man that I was partnered with that I was ashamed of being divorced. And he said, that's nothing, you know, and he starts in on this rant that was hilarious. <laughs> and it, it totally made me realize and wake up to the fact that my shame was self-induced mm -hmm. and that I could step outside of it. And so uh, I began to um, pick up the pieces and um, it took me a long time to get over my loss. Um, because my uh, former husband was a good man. He was a very good man. And um, he just had, you know, it was time, I guess, for both of us to be done. Yes. And so in that process, one of the things that we did is my husband wanted us to file bankruptcy before um, ending the, the marriage, and I didn't want to. And he didn't really ask me about it, but he knew how I felt. So he went ahead and did it on his own and then let me know that I was one of his... Uh, oh, creditors. <laughs> creditors, yeah. Thank you. And so that meant my choices were, A, file bankruptcy, which is what he wanted me to do, or B, pay off his debt. And because I always wanted to teach manifestation, I felt that that would be a way to prove that I was really good at it. So I did. It took me seven years. And this is not to say that I disapprove of filing bankruptcy. It was me looking at the reality and saying, I know there's more than one way out of this dilemma, right. and I'm choosing this one. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want it to come across like I disapprove, because plenty of people do file bankruptcy because they are at the end of their rope, and that's all they can do. Mm -hmm. But in my case, I felt that that was not for me. So um, that was the beginning of me really paying attention to what I was doing. Now, I had been manifesting all my life. I can remember a time when I needed an extra hundred dollars and I was a new mom and I thought I would manifest it by uh, bringing in this extra hundred dollars from a paint job that I would pick up and um, the money came in right on time but I didn't get the painting job I thought I was going to get but the money was still there and I remember thinking oh my goodness you don't have to know how all you have to know is what mm -hmm. and that was a huge aha and that was you know 30 years ago or more and so then I began teaching manifestation I actually taught manifestation before I ever taught sacred geometry and um, but I had this idea of how sacred geometry and manifestation will be tied together and so one of the biggest things that happened to me was this decision to, um, to, to teach so I could write and it seems funny, most people are afraid of public speaking, but I was quite good at public speaking. I was afraid to write because I was afraid that somebody would discover, you know, something that was wrong with my writing. Who knows? Yeah. But as a speaker, I was pretty good on my feet, and I already knew that because I'd worked in sales for so long. 
So that's what I did. I, I chose to do that. Now, I don't know if I've told that story, so I don't want to repeat myself, but um, I put a thought in my awareness that it would be lovely if I could teach a class at this national meeting. And that's what I did. Um, and the way I got in was simply uh, having this thought every day for about a month. And then when I was at the national meeting, I had a conference with a friend of mine who was leaving the industry, and I asked her what she was going to do next. She shared her dreams, and it felt comfortable, so I told her my dream. And she's the one who told me, well, you have to submit a proposal to the education committee. And I said, well, I knew that. I didn't really, but, you know, that seems kind of obvious. <laughs> and then she said, yeah, but the deadline is next week because the staff has to review it and approve it first before the committee gets it. And I said, oh, I didn't know that. And then she dropped the bomb and said, and if you get it done this year, I will speak in favor of it because I sit on the committee. I've been complaining there haven't been enough interpersonal courses like this. And uh, I think it's a really good idea, and it's my last meeting. <laughs> so you had to move. <laughs> you had to manifest had that. To, yes, but the, the thing is, it was the manifestation work mm -hmm. that dropped it right. in my lap. Exactly. So, you know, the manifestation work will give you the opportunity. You still have to step up. It's mm -hmm. not like you get a free ride, mm -hmm. but you definitely get a lift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. You know, it's that's really so true in, in our life. If we can, I love hindsight because we can always see where we've been and our path. And it's really true that if you keep in, in the right light, not in a selfish light, but that you know it's divinely your birthright to have whatever you need, car, clothes, job, you know, income, whatever it is to meet those needs, they will come. And the moment you find it and give your gratitude is when another explosion of an element you jump above. It's, it's really, really beautiful. My, if I can just say this, my husband told me um, just a few days ago, it was funny, I bought in January a brand new 2014 Camaro, Red Rock Red or Red Rock Metallic. It was, it's gorgeous. It's like two colors, different lights. And it's something I wanted since I was a little girl. But to me, growing up in the 70s or late 60s, 70s, those were boy cars to me. You know, and I thought, oh, I can never have that. I can never have that. And then another thought after I divorced and remarried, I thought, I want to be able to take care of myself and buy my own stuff. So my other manifestation was doing this all by myself. So we were speaking a few days ago, and, and not only did I, I just want to say, I bought the car by myself, my own credit, you know, everything. Um, and I got the car that I wanted since I was a little girl, but my husband said, who's always had Camaros and, and Mustangs, not brand new ones, but he said, you know what, I manifested this through you. It can, because we're partners, I get to enjoy the beauty of this. I've always wanted a brand new one. I've always bought, you know, five-year-old ones. I've always wanted a brand new one, so I've been able to enjoy this too. And I thought it really blesses not just me, but others around me. And Absolutely, and I totally get that, and I totally agree with you, yeah. because if we don't own it, if your husband didn't own that, that he had manifested it through you, mm -hmm. then he would be missing out on his next manifestation, right. and I've done the same thing with my husband. Um, I bought my husband a brand new car, not a brand new car, two-year-old uh, Mercedes CLSX, and he couldn't get it with his credit, but if he didn't sign on the dotted line, and it was only my credit that they evaluated it, it was doable, mm -hmm. which is hilarious yeah. um, uh, because of what I went through, you know, and, and all the right. hoops I had to go exactly. through to, to go from lousy credit to phenomenal credit. And um, and I had it, that, too, in my first divorce where my credit yeah. was smashed to smithereens. And manifesting is so beautiful. There's so much I want to get into, but I also want to say because it's just you're a mom and I'm a mom. And I love how you said that he – appreciate and acknowledge that manifestation even though it was through me I used to be a, a hospice nurse I was telling you before and I was working late at night um, on the graveyard shift and I all of a sudden I was reading a spiritual um, some spiritual writings and all of a sudden I realized we can manifest this is when the kids were tiny babies I said we can manifest more income Absolutely. I knew that it was our divine right as if it had already been placed in our bank account. The next day, my husband got a job from one of my best friends who was on a movie set and said, I need you right this minute so you can get on this movie and you can get in the industry as a doctor on the show. Not acting, but you have to have a medical department in each, on each movie set. So it's part of a union. 
And so it tripled our income overnight. And I kept saying to him for years, do you remember the story of how I manifested it through you? Because you, I'm here to take care of the children. So ladies, you can do this through your partners because if you're taking care of your children, it's your manifestation right. He didn't get it all the time and he used to get really mad and pissy, especially towards our divorce. But the thing is, is it was beautiful and I honored him in saying this was, you know, through your work that I'm taking care of. But it was also beautiful to know that my divine birthright was he was going to get a higher income. No, I didn't know where it was coming from, but I already saw that as in the bank and it, and it tripled literally overnight. So, nice. Well, this leads us to what we're, the phase we're in right now, and that is the marriage of the divine masculine and the divine feminine. And that's, and that's a lot of what you're about because you're raising the consciousness of the divine feminine and giving her permission to be whatever version of the divine feminine she wants to in the moment. And what I will say is, sometimes when we separate the duties in a family, and we all do, you know, you're good at this, so you do this, and I'm good at this, and you do this. I said to my hus my current husband now, you know, in your last marriage, did you buy all the groceries? And he said, no. And I said, well, that's interesting. And... Um, he knows that I do not like to go to the grocery store to get the groceries. Mm -hmm. And um, it's partly because I don't like to stand and then and then move a few inches and stand and move a few inches. I want to keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't pick stuff out if you don't yeah. stop and look at it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So it, I come back exhausted. So I, I'm always kind of tied up when we need groceries, you know. So <laughs> little by little, he figured this out. And, and the point I want to make here is that even though there's a division of labor, whether it's on the feminine side or on the masculine side, when we recognize that the units that we have created in a relationship, whether it's a, a beloved partnership or whether it's a marriage, whatever kind of union it is, when we choose to recognize that we are a family mm -hmm. and whatever we can do to, to create what we need comes through either one of us, it's very powerful. Now, I did the same thing with my husband and his manifestation work, and his income has jumped dramatically. And we're seeing the benefits of that in lots of ways. Mm -hmm. But we both get it mm -hmm. that I'm enhancing his income and he's enhancing mine. Mm -hmm. And it isn't just about income. It's actually more about he's enhancing what I can put out mm -hmm. as a professional spiritual teacher, mm -hmm. and I'm enhancing what he can do as a, a physicist and researcher. Mm -hmm. And together, we do something really amazing. It's beautiful. That's beautiful. And that's also part of manifesting a beautiful union, because it can be done. And it's, I love that. That's beautiful. I feel I manifested this union that I'm in. Because I, I, um, I felt a little bit of um, resentment in my in my uh, when I first got married to him, because he kept asking me for all this business advice, and one day when I was meditating on it, because it was pulling me off of my tasks to go, you know, balance his book or fix the checkbook or figure out the best company to work with or sort this out, you know, whatever it was, the, you know, the, the, the office manager and the business advice, because he's not very good at that. And um, I meditated on it, and I realized that in my manifestation, I wanted to be with someone that would enjoy helping me in various areas, mm -hmm. but that he would need me to help him. So you and realized what I you had manifest. That. Yes, yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Right. I love that's that. Right. Yeah. And then, of course, then the, the resentment it completely evaporated. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, those of you who are listening to us, exactly. when you find yourself feeling resentment or agitation or irritation, take it into meditation mm -hmm. and ask, you know, what's going on? Why am I agitated? And what is the deal here? And it really was, you know, the little girl in me thinking that I was losing quote, time, mm -hmm. totally overlooking the big package that I was gaining. Yes. You know. Yes. yes that was beautiful. very lovely. Yeah. It is lovely. And and that's part of the hindsight is we can see what we've put out to the universe. I want this in a mate, blah, 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 blah. 
And then when it comes to us hand over fist, we have to really appreciate it and separate out because one little aspect might overcover, not overcover, um, might overpower another aspect that you had wanted, but you have so much more on your wish list, so to speak, you know, that you put out to the universe, I want this roommate, I want this roommate, I want this roommate, and I'm going to in turn be the same. And so it's really beautiful to acknowledge that. I love that. Yeah, I will tell you that I did use a system that I created called Bring in the Beloved, and one of the things I will share with you and everyone who is trying to man manifest their beloved, you've got to do this, and that is after you finish your whole list, then you ask the angels or God or whoever you work with to adjust it for your highest and best good and then say no matter what both of us are going to be enormously happy because it, it fixes any of the mistakes we might make you know I think I need this but maybe I don't you know right, right. exactly I love that <laughs> I always tell the ladies to put it in their underwear drawer <laughs> After they fold it up, you know, put it in your underwear drawer. How sexy is that? I love that you brought it to the angels instead of the underwear drawer. <laughs> that's, that's a better way. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Well, you know, they, they have, the angels are the messengers of God, and their job is to work miracles. Their job is to help us feel the love of God right where we are. You know, I tell people... This is a very interesting story, but as a spiritual teacher, I've figured out what the purpose of creation is. And the purpose of creation is to separate that which, separate from that which is inseparable. So if we were all part of God at one time, we volunteered to separate out of God. Why? Because as long as God is everything, and everything is God, there is no newness. So the way to create something new is to create a boundary and then step outside of that boundary and create something new, you know, with a new set of boundaries. So you separate from that which is inseparable. Mm. Then, because we're now separate from that which is inseparable, we have a problem because we miss God. Mm -hmm. And we replace that feeling of missing God with our addictions, with our beloveds, with mm -hmm. our needs to feel safe. That's the feeling of being with God. But prime directive was to make something new, expand the database. So as we look at how we interact with people and situations and things, we can begin to see that we have to create a balance of that which is familiar, which helps us feel safe and close to God, whether it's close to our beloved or close to our children or, you know, a best friend, whatever. And at the same time, we have to be willing to step into unfamiliar territory and create new experiences. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very nice. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. I have a question for you. What is it to you to access your feminine power? Uh, I will share with you, when I was growing up, I had something happen to me that made me have an opinion that boys got all the good stuff. Mm. And I was climbing a tree, and I had a recall of this after a bunch of ex experiences, so, but I'll just tell you the exact story. I was climbing a tree. Now, I grew up on a vegetable farm, and we all worked on the farm, you know. Yes. I tried the, the pity card once on my dad and said that I hadn't even had time for breakfast when he yelled at me for punching the clock at five after seven instead of five till seven. <laughs> and when I said I didn't have breakfast, he said, then you're going to have to get up earlier. <clears throat> and anyway, so I'm climbing the tree, and my dad's coming along, and I'm thinking, I'm going to climb the tree and show him how, you know, I'm just like his, my brothers. So I climbed up higher than I never had ever had climbed before. And he comes along and says, honey, you're going to have to get down from that tree. And I said, why? And he said, well, I don't want you to get hurt. So far, so good. And then I said, but dad, Kenny and Dick are in this tree all the time. And he said, you know what? But they're boys. And that's when I decided that boys got all the good stuff because the boys drove tractors. They didn't have to do dishes after supper. Right. But the girls did. The girls didn't drive even tractors. All we had to do, we had to work on the barn and do heavy lifting and stuff like that. So 
That's where I came from. And then I did my inner work, my spiritual work, and I discovered this and fixed it. Mm -hmm. Up until that point, as a corporate, I would never wear pink, mm -hmm. and I never really had any clear female friends because I didn't trust women. Mm -hmm. And I had seen women backstab each other. I had seen, you know, that old model that we have seen where women are in competition for the only mate. And so that's a behavior that women have learned. And even if, it, even if they're not in the market for a mate, they still have that old behavior, you know, mm -hmm. that's part of their patterning. So I was very, I'm very good terms with lots of men, but I wasn't really that interested in being involved with women. And so stepping into my feminine power didn't happen until after my fourth child was born. Mm -hmm. And I was still certainly in my power as a, as a guy, but what I did is I created something in me that was a balanced male-female, and it was at that point that I was allowing myself to express the divine feminine. So it's very interesting. That is, that is. And I love the salmon you're wearing, very feminine. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a couple of things I want to um, offer here, and the, the first one is I'm reminded of the book, The Red Tent. And if you've never read it, or those of you who are listening to us, if you've never read it, I strongly encourage you to find it. It was on the bestseller list probably 10 years ago. It is a remarkable book. It's from the time of the biblical era. And it's a, the reason they called it the Red Tent is because women went to the Red Tent when they were on their menses. Right. And the taboo, for example, of having sex during your menses came from that. Mm -hmm. But when you went to the Red Tent, you were treated like a queen. Mm -hmm. And you could take a bath, you could sleep all day, you did not have to cook or clean mm -hmm. while you were on your period. And I'm sorry, but if that meant no sex, I'd be all for it. <laughs> 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 because you'd, you'd really have some serious R&R. &R. Mm -hmm. And the younger, younger women were expected to take care of the older women. Mm -hmm. And that would, I'm, cer I'm certain, would create a huge sisterhood. So, you know, we carried with us forward into this society you know, the taboo that was from that era, but we lost all the benefits, which is too right. bad, right. because we didn't understand that side of it. Mm -hmm. so, so that's one piece. And then the second piece is, um, this is also why I started the Akashic Records Guides, because I wanted to create an organization of equals, of women helping women and empowering women. And instead of women being critical of other women, saying to yourself, and this is the fastest way to change up your own relationship and your own behavior, not only with other people in general, but especially with women, when you want to be critical and you're feeling like, well, you know, they should have done it this way. What you're really saying, of course, is I wouldn't have done that. I would have done it this way. You know, so that for it makes me better. But if, if we were to say, what can I do to help? Mm -hmm. Or I wonder, I wonder what she was thinking, or I wonder mm -hmm. what's going on here, mm -hmm. it, it moves us from being critical to being supporter. It does. And sometimes that's all it takes. Mm -hmm. If you're on the other side of that criticism and someone calls up and say, hey, I didn't get my order, and you know, your, your company is a big uh, sham because you didn't do what you promised, and you respond with, I am so glad to hear from you, I had no idea. And I'm so grateful that you spoke up so I can fix it. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't it have been fun if you called and said, I'm really disappointed I didn't get my order, and I'm, I'm so looking forward to hearing from you, mm -hmm. and I hope everybody's okay mm -hmm. at your company. Right. You know, somebody didn't <laughs> die or something. <laughs> or a tornado <laughs> took your building away. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it, it's like instead of assuming the worst in terms of their ethics, mm -hmm. assume that if they didn't do their job, it's because there's something that they either didn't know about or they right. had no control over. And that's living in the power of the space of now in beauty. It truly is. And that's really the way to manifest, too, is because... Yes, it is, because it keeps you in the positive. Mm -hmm. and, and it creates for you the question, uh, I wonder what's going on over there and if everyone's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the first things I used to ask my sons when they were late or... Uh, calling me when they're supposed to be home, you know, are you okay? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I would say. Right. 
and I did that because I wanted them to know that their safety was my highest priority. Yeah, I'm going to be mad if you're not making curfew, yeah. but I want to know if you're okay first. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a loving thing. That's, that's wonderful. I have a question for you that's going to rock the house here, I think. <laughs> do you think age has anything to do with our spiritual growth as women? I think it has a lot to do with it. Um, there's nothing like experiences to open your heart. Now, that being said, I will say, as a mystic, I happen to know that there are many women, many humans, mm -hmm. in embodiment that are already ascended beings. Mm -hmm. And so they don't need age to achieve maturity or wisdom. All they need is the rah-rah, the right. cheerleader of us, mm -hmm. to uh, peel back that banana shell, so to speak, to expose the divine within yes. them. And there are a lot of beings who are here yes. who are already ascended. And not only can I speak this as a mystic, that I, you know, I'm getting that information directly from God, but I will also tell you when I'm in the Akashic Records, and we have somebody who is young, and they are trying to do some past life work because they're trying to sort something out, and they call me and they say, you know, I'm not getting any past life stuff. I can't I can't get the answer to, you know, my queries. You know, what's going on? Why can't why you know, I work with some of the best people and I still can't open up, you know, about my past. And my answer always I say my answer, but really the answer from with the records is always the same. And it's as an ascended being you do not need to know your history. Mm -hmm. Because it's been locked. And it's like a trust fund. If you're already ascended and you're here to help, you're not here to learn lessons. You're just here to be exposed to the pain and hardship so you can get acclimated to this place that has become difficult and then pour out your love and light to help people. That's wonderful. Thank you. How would you um, encourage a woman to keep her grace in a male-dominated work society and to bring them around? Uh, I would do a couple of things. I would first learn to express myself mm -hmm. in a respectful way. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, I think what I would do is ask them, I would do a lot of the energy work. So I would be working behind the scenes in my prayer work and I would be seeing them connecting with me at the higher self level and getting me and getting what I can do for them to the point where they would want to work with me and they would recognize that it's fun and easy. I'd also think I'd use humor because I find humor enormously successful. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'll give you an example. Now, this is not something you can do in the workplace, but um, doing something dramatic to get a man's attention does work. So, for example, if, you know, if a man does something sexist and it's inappropriate, Instead of finding fault, look them in the eye and say, well, that was a little below the belt, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Guys talk that way to guys. Right. Then they hear it. Mm -hmm. If you say, well, you're not supposed to be doing that, <laughs> you're telling them they're not allowed. Right. You've just become the mom to yeah. them. Okay? And this brings me to something else. I want to come back to this, but I want to say this one thing. I think women of the world teach men to lie. And I think it's high time we stopped doing that. And here's how we do it. Did you eat all the cookies in the cookie jar? Nope. Nope. <laughs> but if you said instead, I noticed the cookies are all gone. And I just want you to know that it's very important to me that you get good nutrition, so I hope you'll clean up your plate at dinner. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, s it sends an entirely different message. Mm -hmm. You know, one time I came home from work, and the trampoline was dangerously close to the garage, which had a lower roof line than the rest of the house. Mm. And at dinner, I said, I noticed the trampoline was, you know, in this new spot. And I know you guys know better than to jump off the roof of the garage onto the trampoline. <laughs> Dang. But I'm not so sure about the neighbor kids. So would you please move it back? Uh, yeah, yeah. Because there is no point in this. So the, so the statement here is, don't ask a question you already know the answer to, mm -hmm. especially to your wards, to your children. Mm -hmm. 
Instead, ask a different question or make a statement, I've noticed, blah, blah, blah. And that this is my expectation mm -hmm. that such and such happened. Right. And this way, they know you're onto them, but you haven't taught them to lie. Because you know, if you say, did you, they're going to deny it. Mm -hmm. So it's a very interesting thing. Yeah. And that we don't intend to do that, but it's, a, it's, again, it's a way to train yourself to be different. So now, going back to the workplace, doing something dramatic is very powerful, especially if it can be funny. So you find something that changes up the situation that can be funny, like the statement I gave you, you know, well, that was below the belt, don't you think? Um, one time I had a boss that I got along with famously, very handsome man and single. He had a steady girlfriend and we got along so well and, you know, every once in a while he would make what I would call um, sexy type jokes, which I also thought were funny. I was never offended by them. And one day I said to him, you know, I think we ought to cut back on that kind of humor. And he said, why? And I said, because even though I don't mind it, I think it might lead to someone else misunderstanding us, mm -hmm. or it might lead us to think that, that we're serious when we're being playful. Mm -hmm. And I know you're being playful, and I'm being playful, but I don't want to create that possibility in the future. Mm -hmm. So we cut back. And it was just a very sincere statement. Right. And so that's, you know, if a woman's been going along with something all along, and now you're trying to cut back on it, you can just have a friendly conversation and say, I think I need to cut back because I don't want to send the wrong message mm -hmm. to you or to anybody else. And I wonder if you would consider doing the same. So Maureen, you have a free gift for everyone. Would you like to share it? Yes, I would. Good, thank you. The free download can be found at um, geniesystem.com. And this is a wonderful set of um, affirmations uh, affirmations that will help people claim their divine rights to be here and they were written originally for an individual who was very down she was one probably uh, in one of the darkest places I've ever seen anybody she was a young mother who had uh, truly uh, you know was at the end of her rope I mean to the point where one day when she was at the store trying to buy diapers, she didn't have enough money in her ATM card. Mm. It was really, you know, very depressing for her. And when I tried to help her, all she could do was think of her negative, right. her negatives. You know, I'm afraid I'm going to be a failure. I'm afraid I'm going to run out of good ideas. I'm afraid I'm not mm -hmm. going to have another good job, blah, blah, blah. On and on it went. So I wrote them all down. There were over 30. The next morning she called me. I thought of a few more. So we got them all out. And they're like little children. These negative thoughts are like little children, and they want to be heard. Once they're heard, they're satisfied. Then we took all of them and rewrote them in the positive. And one of the uh, affirmations that I gave her was, I am a woman of substance, and what I do matters in the world. That's beautiful. A month later, her husband's iPad was stolen on the job, and he was a um, filmmaker in New York City. And he didn't tell her for two days because he was so upset. So she um, finally, when she did hear about it, she asked him where it was taken. And he told her. And without telling him, she went to the store owner and said, I figure there's two possibilities. Either a customer stole the iPad or one of your employees. Hmm. And, you know, we're a young couple. We don't have a lot of resources, blah, blah, blah. And I would be so grateful if you would at least ask. We won't pursue it. We won't go to the authorities. We would just really like to have the iPad back. It would mm -hmm. make such a difference to us. And the store owner was so impressed with her fortitude mm -hmm. that he gave the karma lecture to his employees. This is New York City mm -hmm. this year. And he called her the next day and said, I had your iPad. That's beautiful. These affirmations do work. And anyway, it's a wonderful thing to play, you know, at bedtime or whatever. Yeah. Get yourself wonderful. in gear. Thank you. And and also, we don't take what's not ours. It's not just karma. It's our divine right to have what's ours. And it'll come in our right path. Right, Maureen? Of course. But the people who are listening to this aren't takers. That's true. The people who are listening to this. 
<laughs> See, and that that's very important that we claim that because, um, you know, it's easy to, to pass judgment on the person that took it, but we don't know what their situation right. is either. Right. And, you know, that guy might have thought that it was a company iPad and that the guy would get a replacement and that he worked yeah. for a big organization, which was all untrue. Right. But how would anyone know that, exactly. you know? And so people make decisions for various reasons. And uh, I have found that the more we expect that even when somebody does something that they ought not, that it's only because they are doing the best they can and that's the best they can. Mm -hmm. So, That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. And we all look forward to seeing this. That's lovely. Thank you so much for joining us. And your information will be on in the credits in just a minute. So. Thank you. It was lovely having you on. Thank you for having me. You're a delight to work with, Mia. Thank you so much. And we'll see you all in the next segment. Goodbye.